So what we're talking about today is changing club culture. Now, I've traveled my own district extensively. I've traveled some of your districts. And what I've learned is that there are two things Rotarians don't like. The first is the way things are. <laughs> now that would include, I don't like the meals. I don't like the president. I don't like the meeting place. I don't like the speakers. You've heard all of this, right? But the one thing they really hate, just absolutely grinds them to the core, is when something changes. So this is a little bit of a problem. Now, this segment actually grew out of uh, some feedback that we got in a membership summit three years ago. We'll give you that opportunity at the end here. We have some evaluations on your table. And one of those spots will be, what are some of your takeaways from this event? And what, what do you wish had been covered? In that, what do you wish had been covered segment, person wrote, how do I take this back to my club? How do I take this back to my club? The underlying assumption was, I don't think my club is ready for the ideas I heard today. And I don't think my club's going to go along with it. And I don't feel like I'm adequately armed to take on that challenge. So that's what this is about. How do I take this back to my club? I hope that this segment will be the, the rotary value proposition for you having, having driven in here and spent the day with us. Because I guarantee you, you can use all of these same principles in this segment in the rest of your life. You can use it in your family, in your church, in your business. This is basically about how to change the status quo in an organization, how to change culture. So the situation is this. Humans are naturally wired to love the status quo. Humans are naturally wired to resist change. And the deal is that, if, especially if your club is failing on one dimension or another, membership, foundation, service projects, you name it, that's because for one thing, expectations are low. Everybody's completely okay with a couple of members a year, attrition and, and, and net decline. And nobody sees a problem with that. You feel like, you know, I'm all alone here. I'm the only one that sees a problem. Nobody gets it. So they'll be pushing back. They'll be hoping to maintain the status quo because that's where they're comfortable. And if they can get you silenced, then everything will be back to normal. You have to decide, and I encourage you to take the challenge of becoming a change agent in your club. Some things will need to be different if you want different results. And if we keep things the way, keep doing things the way we are, we're going to keep getting the same results that we've been getting before. So the intention of this segment is to talk about changing club culture, specifically with respect to membership growth. As I mentioned, it'll work on any other dimension of club performance. If membership is not your problem, you may be able to use this in your foundation efforts or in your uh, community service efforts. So the problem is that culture, you can't just grab culture and change it. Becky mentioned, for example, the, the challenge of articulating culture. Culture is almost to be felt, not to be explained, right? It's, it's somewhat ethereal. So what you have to do is you have to change the strategies. You have to decide to do something different, approach it a different way. And then behind that, as Becky also pointed out, we want to change the behaviors. We want to do those three things that would turn a behavior into a habit. Let's do something more than once in our club, get used to it, and start doing something different to create a different result. And finally, then, you want to reinforce that. So a reinforced behavior following a different strategy, then culture will follow that. Culture will just come right along for the ride. Now, I didn't think this stuff up. This comes from a book by one of the world experts on organizational culture change. He gets paid hundreds of thousands of dollars in consulting fees by large organizations. Uh, John Cotter is a Harvard Business School professor. He is arguably the world's leading expert on change of culture and uh, leading change in organizations, because that's what this is, is leading a change in your club. So if you'll turn to page 19, this is another audience participation effort. On page 19, we're talking about a recipe for changing club culture. Page 20. 20? Okay, thank you. So step number one, 
And I would, enc I, I do encourage you to pick up the book. I don't get any royalties from this, but um, Cotter basically goes through, here are the ways that culture change fails. And then here are the ways to address those failures. And the first is this low expectations. This just, we're satisfied with being less than we could be. So the challenge is to reset the bar, to redefine what good is, just to completely erase how we've been doing it and what we've been doing and the results we've been getting and step up the bar to here's where we need to be. Now, what Cotter also says is if you're not getting through, create a crisis. Now, I've seen your membership data. Half of you do not need to create a crisis. You've already got one. So the challenge is to help your club members understand that this is something that we really got to get on and we've got to do something about. So what I'd like you to do in that first section, reset the bar, I'd like you to redefine what good is in your club with respect to membership. This is no more than one or two sentences. Okay, thank you. On page 21, no more than one or two sentences, resetting the bar, what does good look like? What is that metric of where we want to be as a club with respect to membership? We'll give you a couple of minutes for that and then uh, Patrick will ask some questions. This create a crisis idea is make it an urgent priority. priority. Change it for something that we'll think about every now and then to a top level priority. Who would like to share what reset the bar looks like in your club? What does good look like? Hi, Rick Masak from the Becca Club. Uh, this is our uh, centennial year, and uh, we want to attain a membership of 100. So that's uh, significantly higher than uh, what we started out with, with 82, and we're at 90 right now. And we have our club assembly uh, a couple weeks uh, in, in February. And I see a path ahead. I've been talking to our membership chair and our president-elect, and I, I see a path ahead to that. I think we can attain that. So, so, so instead of creating a crisis, you have a rallying point. In terms yes. Of your That's fantastic. We've tied our service projects to that goal. You know, 100 blankets, 100 uh, jeans for teens, and things like that. So, And it's got, uh, it's got its own momentum. And we found out that some of the local papers are not only following the club website, but they're following our president-elect, who's generating a lot of these things. And she's she's asking, how did you how did you know about this? Because I didn't put that one out for everybody. And she says, I'm, he said, I'm following you because they, they want to put some good news stories out there with all this COVID. So they're looking for sources of uh, successes in the community. So great. Reset the bar. Good for us is going to be 100 members for our centennial. Great. And then we're going to we'll, we'll as we work through the rest of this, we'll talk about some ways to help you get there. And stating that publicly. It's sort of like starting a fire behind you on a long wooden bridge. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you want to assess your club, assess where you are, right? I mean, that's part of knowing where you're going is where, where you're starting. So we talked earlier about the club health check, and we gave you that tiny URL that would allow you to link to it. Here it is again, the Rotary Club health check. We encourage you to use this as part of your assessment, but we're also going to give you uh, just a, a minute or two for you to write down how you will do that assessment for your club to determine your starting point in this club culture change. Does that make sense? I see a couple of wrinkled eyebrows. My inclination would be a group activity. Uh, it could even be a small group within your club who, who does this, not necessarily the probably the best way to do it. Or a club assembly discussion. Club assembly discussion to, to help to help uh, evoke from your members what their opinions are about your, how your club's doing. Yeah. So take, take a minute or two, write down how you're going to assess where you're starting from in this culture change journey. Take another 30 seconds on this, then we're gonna move on to the next step. Not gonna have you report out on this one, but I hope you have written down how you will assess. Okay, moving on to the next step, create a coalition. This is gonna be a team sport, okay? Solo Act is gonna have a pretty tough time 
changing the culture. So you want to build a coalition of influential members who will buy into your vision. Now, these may be members in your club who have formal leadership titles, or they may be the folks who have sort of done all the roles, but they're still very influential in your club, even though they don't hold a particular title or position at the moment. But you want to bring these people together, help them understand your vision for the club, and get their buy-in. Because ultimately, you're going to need their blessing, and you're going to need their support. So think now about who you will want to be a part of your coalition. I will not ask you to name names on that, but do write down, right, all right, that could be problematic, but do please go ahead and write down who your coalition members will be. This is, I believe, easily the number one takeaway from this book. And that is, please don't take these ideas that you've heard today that you like back to your club on Tuesday or Wednesday of next week and just toss them out on the table in front of everybody. You will, you'll get killed. You will get shredded. Start building a coalition of people that will buy into this quietly one at a time. So that by the time you bring these ideas to the table in, say, a board meeting, you've got widespread support around the table. That's really the whole premise of this build a coalition. Let, let me mention again that we're going to give you a very detailed success story after this module that's going to show you how to implement this. So go ahead and write down your, your targets for your coalition. Okay, you got some names in mind. These are people that are thought leaders, respected members of your club, may or may not have a formal position. And they may include some folks that you expect to be pushing back. If you can get them at least neutralized on the front end, this is going to go a whole lot easier in terms of getting something different to happen in the club. So let's move on to creating a vision. Let's talk about vision for a minute. Cotter's statement in the, in the book is that People completely underestimate the, the power of a vision and, more importantly, underestimate the vacuum that exists if in, the, in the lack of a vision. The fact is that people want something to throw in behind. People want something to believe in, and they want to, they want to hear it articulated. Now, election campaigns are just a, election campaigns are won and lost on vision. If you vote for me, here's what I'll do for you. Sometimes undeliverable, but at any rate, the whole premise of attracting votes in an election campaign is based on vision. So let's talk about an effective vision. Let's talk about the attributes of an effective vision. First of all, it's something that is imaginable. A hundred members in our hundredth year. It's, it's within reach. We could get there from here. I can see there from right here. It's desirable. People can get behind it because it it plays into their best interest. And believe, it or, believe me, folks, it's in the best interest of every member of your club for the club to be consistently and moderately growing. There's nobody that's hurt by that. That it's realistic, that it's attainable. You don't want to set a goal from 30 to 40. You want to set a goal from 30 to 33, something that everybody can buy into. Um, something that guides decision making. It's focused enough. Here's exactly how we're going to reset the bar. Here's exactly what good looks like, and we're going to embark on this plan to get there. It's got some flexibility in it. There's some, there's some initiative allowed. And then it can be successfully communicated. Now, in my work as a small business coach, I sometimes get invited to help a client design a compensation plan, specifically an incentive plan. Anybody ever been on one of those? You do this, I'll pay you that. Right? Okay. Well, I apply to that what I call the one martini rule. And that is when I'm talking to Ashley as a business owner about an incentive comp plan and say, Ashley, this has got to be simple enough that any employee can explain it to their spouse over no more than one martini. <laughs> the same is true of an effective corporate or organizational vision. So here's, here's a version of a vision. I didn't think this up. This is an example from Cotter's book. Our goal is to reduce our mean time to repair parameters so they're perceptibly lower than all major competitors inside the United States and out. 
In a similar vein, we have targeted new product development cycle times, order process times, and other customer relevant processes for change. That is from the Corpse Speak Dictionary. What about, what about this? We're going to become faster than anyone in our industry at satisfying customer needs. Better? Better. I, I once was a, a part of a Fortune 1000 corporation, large publicly traded company. The entire vision was also the tagline. And that was excellence in customer satisfaction. That was the whole thing. Now, how that played out and part of what reinforced it and made it work is that the company put in what was called the customer satisfaction hotline. It was an 800 number published in all of our literature, advertising, et cetera. And it rang in to the CEO's assistant who would, if he happened to be there, put him on the line, if not find him. And that day, something happened. You can bet that the operating unit where that problem existed got a call that day to see what was going to happen. And by taking that action behind the statement of excellence in customer satisfaction, the company reinforced that value proposition. That's how this works. Here's my personal favorite vision statement of all time. I believe this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to Earth. A multi-billion dollar, million man hour project described in one sentence. Now, that was delivered before a joint session of Congress. And as you know, of course, Kennedy got the money and we got to the moon. Here's what he could have said. He could have said, our mission is to become the international leader in the space industry through maximum team-centered innovation and strategically targeted aerospace initiatives. Might not have got the billion dollars, I don't know. So let's talk about a vision for a Rotary Club. Here's a possible. Our Rotary Club will continue its legacy of community service, utilizing our influential membership to assist agencies in our community to achieve their missions. We'll raise money and we'll give it away to other people. What do you think? I don't know. Or maybe. Our Rotary Club will be the growing, effective, vibrant force in our community, making it a better place to live. Might be something the members could get behind. So what I'd like you to do is compare that to Rotary's new vision. Together, we see a world where people unite and take action to create lasting change across the globe, in our communities, and in ourselves. There's one particular attribute to this that's important. Vision statements work well when you start with I see. This starts with together we see. That's probably not accidental by the team that put this together. A vision statement is a word picture. It's a word picture of a future different from the past. So let's talk about your vision for your club, specifically with respect to membership. Now, the answers are in the back of the book. On the fourth page of this uh, insert, there are some sample vision statements. You're welcome to rip off any of those, use any parts of them that you want, or start with a blank sheet of paper, put your own together. Let's take a couple of minutes. And this is a vision statement of no, it, it, it is not a statement of a problem. It's not a statement of a solution. It's not what we're going to do. It's where we're going to be. Everybody got that? Not the problem, not the solution, not the strategy, but where we're going to be. Give you a couple of minutes to work on that. Okay. Okay. Who has a vision? Who has a vision they'd be willing to share? Vision of, of a future in your club that's different I'll from share. the past. There we go. Erica Gunn from the Spencer Rotary Club. I see our club as a service-based organization who's relevant and active in our community. We welcome everyone who shares our values to serve and live a life of service above self. Yeah. I get behind that. Yeah. I can get behind that. 
we didn't write one down. We were kind of still discussing it, but we really like the verbiage in three and four. So using some kind of combination and changing some verbiage between the third and the fourth, um, one of those samples. Okay. Yeah, you're, you're, you're welcome to pick those up and use any parts of them that you like. Then the next challenge, after you get that figured out, the next challenge is how am I going to communicate this to the club? I've got a coalition together, they're buying it. We have a vision of this club being different in the future than it has been in the past. How are we gonna communicate that broadly to the club and perhaps to the community at large? So here's a suggestion, another thing that you can use. We're going to follow a little acronym here and the acronym starts with S. S is the situation and the point of that would be just explain the current facts. Now, I'm assuming that's on page 22 rather than 21. Is that right? 22? Okay. Explain the current facts. The deal is we can all have different opinions, but we can't have different facts. So this would be something that you could, if asked to prove, you could fall back on some proof source of here's the situation. Second is the problem. And that starts something like, the problem with that is. Third bullet would be the implication. Implication meaning, if we don't do something about that, here's where we're likely to see the outcome. Or that means blank. That's part of where you create this crisis. And then finally, the need. Here's what I believe we need to do. All right? Now, again, I didn't think this up. This came from a book called Spin Selling. It's a brilliant principle. And again, I wouldn't ask you to do anything I wouldn't do. Anytime I'm approaching any sort of meaningful conversation with anybody, business, family, rotary, I take out a blank sheet of paper. I write S, P, I, and N down the left-hand margin. And I put together these three or four sentences describing the situation, the problem, the implication, and the need. I've used this in huge critical situations. I've used it in small conversations about smaller things. It's just, it's a beautiful acronym and it's a beautiful framework anytime you're trying to communicate with anybody in a persuasive mode. So let's talk about a situation, our club has been on a steady downward trend in membership, losing an average of two members a year for the past five years. Indisputable, it's either true or it's not. The problem with that is the club has learned to accept membership decline as a natural occurrence, has forgotten that growth, not attrition, is the goal. Implication, if we stay on this track, we're going to be, find ourselves with steadily smaller meetings, potential members asking, is this really a group I want to be part of? Once you actually lose the ability to attract members to your club, it is critically difficult to put it back together. Once we lose the ability to attract members, it's only a matter of time till we all age out. Club goes out of business. All we have to do is decide who's gonna stay behind and turn out the lights. That is the what if, that is the create a crisis part. So I believe what we need to do is help the members understand that growing the club is essential to our survival. This is not optional. We need to help them understand that attracting more members is in everyone's best interest, including the new members. This is a pretty good deal. Most of us have been at this for a while and we've stayed for a reason. Somebody else might appreciate Rotary for some of the same reasons. If we need to provide a compelling vision of a growing, vibrant club, and then inspire our members to make it that way. Good example of a spin script for a Rotary Club. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to start your spin script, and let's just talk about the situation first. Let's just take a minute or two, write down the situation that you think needs to be addressed in your club. These are facts. These are verifiable. All right, who's got a statement of a situation in their club? Just the situation statement. Who's got one of those? There we are in the back. 
Jan Powell. Here are the facts. Our club lost more than half of its membership between 2020 and 2022. That would get my attention. That's creating crisis. Somebody else. Uh, this is Vivian Atkinson from Cerrito Canova Club. And for those of you who don't know, we are the westernmost club in West Virginia. <laughs> they put the West in West Virginia. Uh, yes. Anyway, uh, the, our problem in the situation here that we're talking about is the fact that all the, our members, we're losing members, but it's because we're all getting older and they're passing away. And our they, club's population is aging. Yes. That's the yes. situation. Yes. Easy to prove. Just look around. <laughs> okay. One more. Now let's talk about the problem statement that comes behind that. We described the situation. And here's the point of this. You don't want to just assume that your members are going to get it. You don't want to assume that they'll be able to connect those dots for themselves. Because I'm, I'm telling you, many of them can't. There are people who would hear that we've lost, what did you say, half of our members? We've lost half of our members in two years. There are people in your club that that fact would just bounce right off of. You say, oh, yeah, well, we had COVID. Right? So articulation of the problem is a big part of this message because not everybody's going to get it. We have to connect the dots for them. What's your description of the problem with the situation that you defined in your spin script? Take a couple minutes for that. Okay, who's got a problem statement they'd be willing to share? You got a situation and problem, probably just do them back to back. Okay, Rick? Charles, you been day. Our problem is we've become complacent with uh, uh, our declining membership and blamed it on things like out migration uh, and things like that. And um, so we've come to accept it and that we can't change it. That is a problem. That's a really clear cut problem. We've just assumed this to be normal. Here comes the no problem club. <laughs> oh, Lord. Okay. Well, yeah. Okay. I was being so quiet. You know, that's unusual, right? <laughs> so, um, well, I think we have, and we've been talking about this, it's just like the lack of enthusiasm. You know, we're on just putter. We're just going to go along with the norm and we're not going anywhere. So our problem is uh, going without a, a vision in the future. And so the, our, our goal is going to be having to get them to get sparky and uh, get a vision, get a vision. Recast. I think one of the biggest issues we have is it's the same people every time. And it's the same people being the officers and it's broken record. Being the most youthful of our group by 20 years, um, it's hard. You know, I see our vision is, you know, obviously continuing the legacy of the people who started it, but developing it in a way so we can include people who might not normally be included. So the problem is leadership development. Correct. The problem is if we keep recycling the same players, we're not building a leadership team for the future. Excellent. Okay. Then that will lead to the implication. 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 You got a situation defined, a problem defined. Now, what what is that about? And again, this is about connecting the dots for your members. They will not necessarily, even after you explain the situation and you explain the problem, they'll not necessarily see why that's trouble. So you really want to articulate this the implication. That means, or if we don't, or if we do. It's the what if part. This is the part that ought to grab your members. This is the create a crisis part. Uh, I'm, I'm from the St. Albans Club, and we're celebrating our 100th anniversary this year. And the implication of what I see is that there's no hope for a, uh, a second one, a second celebration, I guess. We've been there for 100 years, but the future will not be another 100. Based on the track we're on, if nothing changes. Correct. Yeah if nothing changes. Okay, need. Who's got a prescription for what you want the club to do as a result 
of the situation, problem, and implication that you've described. Who's got a who's got a statement of what you'd like the club to do? Anybody over here? Great. Thank you, Cole. Thank you, Chester. Mm -hmm. uh, way in which I put it down is that our club, which is the Huntington Club, needs to become more meaningful and valuable in the community and in the lives, both professional and personal, of its members. Uh, we need to help our city reinvigorate itself and rebuild. Wow, those are, those are some powerful words. Those are words that'll sell, okay? So people can get behind that. Situation, problem, implication, need. Okay, so now you have to teach your members how to visualize all of this. We're assuming they don't know how to grow a Rotary Club because in most cases, if they did, they'd already be doing it, right? So you teach this, you model this kind of behavior, you use the intentional strategies to reinforce this spin script this is all part of changing the culture. As it says up here, different strategies that, de that develop different behaviors. The behaviors support the strategies. When those two things are in place, the culture will follow. Ah, Kim's out of the room. She was talking about communicating last night. I told her I'm gonna talk about communicate, communicate, communicate. You have to communicate this vision over and over and over from the podium in your emails one-on-one -on -one conversations club bulletins communicate 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 and after you've done that what do you do then communicate some more, communicate some more. that's right you have to reinforce the message uh, those of us who have been governors we know that we get so many touches with clubs and rotarians we have to communicate that message when we speak at district conference when we speak on a visit uh, all those times it's the same with a club. This is hard work. It's very doable following this recipe, but you have to be intentional about the way you communicate and keep, keep, keep that message in front of everybody. So communication plan, <clears throat> excuse me, is gonna be important. Uh, you have uh, probably page 22. Item there where you can write down your communication plan. So go ahead and do that. And then we're gonna ask for one or two of you to report out uh, what your communication plan looks like. Who wants to share a communication plan? Michael Miller says he's got the communication plan. We need to hear it. Thank you, Michael. Go. Here, uh, let's see. Thank you, Michael. Weekly touchbacks uh, via a, I think that Ashley's the one that brought up a uh, newsletter that seems to be working well. So weekly. Weekly so newsletter. we talked about drip marketing before, so to just keep getting those touch points, right? Anybody else want to add to that? Here, hold on a second. Hold on. We're recording, so we want everybody to be able to hear you, Laura. One thing that I don't think is mentioned up there specifically is social media. Uh, I know a lot of clubs have their own Facebook pages and using that social media to capture, recap who presented at the meeting or what was going on at the meeting, as well as promote who's going to be at the next meeting. It's free and can share. And, and as I've already said, I follow some of you on social media. Who, and, who and is that, Sean? An important part of that, important part of that is to make sure the message is the same everywhere. Right. Sure it's all reinforced the message. In the social media, in the podium announcements. Here, oh, the one is trying not to be noticed. Oh, okay, here, okay. Yeah, okay. I got it. I'm like, there. Um, social media, I agree. Kingwood uses it all the time. We use it to, uh, we set up events for all of our meetings. We use it for after every meeting. We um, use it to promote all of our events. So I'm really, really big on, on using both Facebook and Instagram for Kingwood. Is that what you want? Again. You're going to want to write down, develop and write down your communications plan. You're likely to forget all of this if you're not making a record, if you're not creating some accountability for yourself in terms of the plan that you're going to roll out. Okay, next up, 
Confrontation. Now, I'm from a little further south than you all. We don't tend to do confrontation too well. We're really good at beating around the bush. But confrontation is sometimes necessary. It doesn't have to be a negative thing. But you want to consider where are the potential obstacles to rolling out this vision, to accomplishing this change of culture. I'm not going to ask you to name these people. Okay? But you should acknowledge that there may be obstacles, challenges, people who are going to try to be in your way. It, it, no, no, we're not going to name names, but you should be ready for that. You, you, you want to go to these folks to explain to them with your coalition, perhaps, to work on this person. Now, if, if you, we've all run into the roadblocks that we can't remove. You know, there may be the member who just, no way can I sign on to this. At least neutralize them. Will you, will you at least give me the benefit of the doubt, stand to the side, give us an opportunity to accomplish this vision. Give it a chance. If it fails, hey, it's on, it's on me, not on you. Feedback here. Um, so anyway, please, please consider where those confrontations may be uh, and, and be ready to uh, deal with them in a way that uh, you, you can give your vision a chance to succeed. You want to set up short-term wins. Okay? You, 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 you want to have very accomplishable goals, uh, things that you know you can win early on. It builds momentum. It lends credibility to the effort. It helps build critical mass. It helps other people want to be a part of this change, setting up those short-term wins. The long-term goal, as we know, is creating a culture of growth, of membership growth in your club. It's not a campaign. We're not recruiting. It's not a membership drive. It's not a short-term thing. It's in the DNA of the club. That's what we're talking about with culture change. So your takeaways, we've talked about this. Reset the bar. Talk about what good looks like. Assessment. Know where you are today. Know what needs to be changed moving forward. Create a coalition. This is really vital. You need a team for this. Could be a combination of formal or titled leaders and informal or, or those leaders who are not currently carrying a title. Create the vision. You saw some great vision statements up there, one from JFK and the other one that I think from Rotary is just fantastic. The spin script. You heard Terry talk about how important that is in every facet of his life. Situation, problem, implication, need. Teach the behaviors you want. Teach your club and your club members how to do this. Communicate, 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 and then communicate some more. Confront those who are going to be in your way. And, and at the very least, neutralize them, have them stand on the side. If not, say, okay, I'll give us a chance and I'll participate. And then set up those short-term wins, right? I mean, it's so much easier to sign on to an effort when you see that it's going in the right direction and it's, it's already getting accomplishments.